Alrighty then. I'm gonna dive in. So yeah, uh, this is me trying to figure out how to stream kernel development or, I don't know, uh, reviews at least. Um, laying out screens has been fun. What does this look like? Pretty massive delay. Anyway, I'll get over it. Um, so I didn't want to just have my inbox sitting out in the open, so instead I pulled threads uh, that uh, I needed to pay attention to out of set comp. Um, and I think the I'm going to start with the th stuff I thought was highest priority. Um, where I am for my set comp trees. It looks like my set comp trees are up to date. I have nothing in next because I haven't done anything yet for, uh, for the next merge window. So, um, I'm just gonna go to master sure I've got it up to date. And back to I have a second tree I don't. So I'm going to set up a work tree. That way I can have multiple trees sitting around. Um, I can switch back and forth easily without have to worrying, worrying about where I am. And normally for for my tree maintainership, based on what uh, Stephen Rothwell had said for Linux Next, was to try to base stuff on RC2 or RC1. So uh, that's basically where I'm gonna go for right now is I'm gonna to merge the 5.9 uh, RC2 for a uh, set comp, and it's not clean. Why is it not clean? Hmm. Interesting. Perhaps I didn't flush anything out yet. Or it was just a typo fix. One moment. Is there an RC1 fix? That should have gone in. Did it not go in? Um, okay, so I have, in the middle here, I have the my tag for 5.9 RC1 fix one for a typo in the SCM rights compat refactoring, which pretty sure uh, went in to 5.9. So I'm gonna get a log of master and look for, yeah, I mean, it was. <laughs> well, we shall worry about this later. Instead, I will reset this to two. And now we're gonna have weird merge problems. Okay. Continuing. I wanted to look at uh, first a memory leak that Tycho found. So here is me pulling something from lore. And I'm bad at script. 
Ding. Okay, so here's a thread from Moore on what this was. It was basically a um, an error path leak that um, Syscaller found, which was effectively if you race uh, seccomp set mode filter with tsync and new listener, which should give you back a file descriptor, if you if two threads diverge, there's seccomp filters, you can't do a t-sync correctly and it will fail, but the listener was left hanging around. Um, so that was the first patch for that, and the second was adding Tycho to uh, the mail map, so he can now use the Tycho.pizza address, which is uh, this is the critical this is the critical half of the patch. That's a joke. And it's been act, and there's more discussion here. Act from Tycho and um... right. This was me asking about like, hey, there's a couple places where we um, do the same thing as far as freeing uh, freeing these filters a couple times. See if there was a. I think there's a follow up to this, which I have listed out here as well. No, that was note of hanging. All right, well, I'm going to quickly go to lore. Let's see about stuff that Tycho sent. It's not a follow-up, so I'll go back to the first one. And I'm happy with that one, so I'm gonna go back to this. And I'm using B4 for pulling stuff out of lore. Uh, B4, I want to do the AM stuff. Uh, B4, AM, apply everything from the Cover trailers and sloppy trailers. Add my signed off by add link and the message ID, which was that first one. And that basically goes and looks at that thread, picks the two patches, adds my signed off by the act by and the link, um, and then I can apply that. Here, I can look at the results. So get log. I like putting my signed off by last, so I will probably re-edit the order on these. So interactive rebase on that and um, change the ordering. It's just something I I prefer. So like everything, in my view, everything above this line is what Tycho sent. Um, and then from the list, it got act by Christian and the link that I pulled it from is here and then I have my signed off. So I, that's kind of the order I prefer it in. Other people have different ideas, but that's sort of what I've been doing. And same thing here, I'll just move my signed off by the end. Anyway, so I cheated a bit because I've actually reviewed this patch before, but if you want, if we look at it, this is specifically dealing with the T-Sync here, which is, um, we're going to do a, we have a notify detach, um, which is supposed to do all the right things as far as detaching a notifier. Uh, in the error case, there's 
nothing, right? There's, there's, uh, it's, it's got the locking, it pushes no out because it's the only thing that can even see it. Um, and then when we do a notify release, we do a detach and a put on the filter. And then this other error path, uh, when we're failing, we do another notify detach. So I just want to take a look at it because I think there was another place. I want to look for a notify detach. Anyway, uh, feel free to ask questions in the chat, too. I see that there are, in theory, people viewing. People are coming and going. But if you want to ask stuff or if I'm using tools you're not familiar with, I'm happy to drop links to things into the chat and, and uh, do stuff like that. So the main thing here is this Notify Detach just notifies everything that's on the notifier list and then uh, hangs up maybe the free and the null and then uh, unlock. So this piece is what I would like to find. My other notif users. Um, which I think what I wanted to do was look for free of notify. So there's this error path here. But I think that's self-contained because it's the one doing the allocation. Um, so I'm fine with that being open coded. It, it does the allocation at, at the top here, and then basically if there's a problem, it'll free it on itself. So that's fine. It's the callers that have a have a knit listener succeed uh, if they do a free. And so far, it looks like those are the only two places. can't remember why I thought there was a third, um, but I'm happy with that. And so my standard thing is, I have an insane script that tries to do tree verification um, and regression testing and all sorts of other things. Right now I got a fight with the seccomp samples build, so I am not using that. I am going to do uh, an all mod config build just because it's easy. Uh, sorry. All yes config takes a lot of memory, so I prefer all mod config as it tends to also get the most. And then I've got a script that will actually do the thing. Um, tree verification, sorry, uh, I can show you. I have this insane script called tree verify that like takes what branch I'm interested in, and then I have a whole set of profiles on what I'm supposed to um, uh, like what it's going to test against. So you can see it knows about it knows about uh, a whole bunch of different architectures since I've got cross compilers installed for all these architectures and then I've got various branches defined and testing profiles. Um, most of them are config testing profiles um, and so you can see I have a, a defined uh, branch system for seccomp, and it looks like maybe I did remove my um, my samples from there just to make things easier. Um, this is sort of what I'll do before I do a full a full push to kernel.org because I don't want broken things to get into into Linux next. Uh, I can show you that, but that's basically. Um, I'll show that in a second. I just want to see if this finishes uh, quickly because this is just a, a fast, sort of a sanity check that nothing horrible was broken. Um, in the meantime, let's go look at this other, and i got to fix that script too. That was my thing to pull from, um, pull down from um, lore so I can reply to specific things. And it looks like I just have one too many slashes. So if I can apply to that, there we go. So this was Tycho's other fix, which is to say, um, we've got some other things sort of open coded here. So instead of um, 
having both notify detach and init listener call the k-free and have potentially a dangling value on the filter, uh, we would have a, sort of a, a notify free uh, that does that. So uh, I want to include this as well. Um, I might end up squashing it, but um, we'll see. Probably I won't squash it just because it's got a, a reported by tag, which is sort of different. Um, so I'll pull that one in too here in a second. And that's going to act as well. This is still building. And uh, so this verify tree script, if you take a look at it, for my own notes on Debian and Ubuntu, um, I served as like the shortcut I have for installing all of the crazy cross compilers that I need. Um, and then like, uh, those are the order in which I want to do builds. And frankly, the only ones I can pay any attention to on logging output are sort of the, uh, the bigger, more well-tested ones. Otherwise, it just pours warnings, and it's not very interesting. And then I have config snippets for everything, and the trees, and what configs I want to do them in. Um, mostly, it was me trying to automate a whole bunch of junk. Uh, let's see, back to this build. Probably almost done. Apparently I need more CPUs. I'm jealous of the, the Threadripper stuff. It's like a hundred and something CPUs. 144, 148. I don't remember how many CPUs those machines have now. But I will... Get back to... Yes, this was the reply. Hundred twenty eight. <laughs> Thanks, Gustavo. <laughs> Still building. There we go. Need some water. Um, and my build script, since I got, uh, you don't want to add new standard error output. Um, you can build with dash, uh, like you can do a make with dash s to keep things silent so you don't get all these lines of output, but I kind of like to see where things are. Um, but if you build with dash s, any standard error is really, really obvious, but if you build with this, you might lose it in the middle. So this wrapper actually, uh, like, keeps the standard error split out. So I see it here and later. So at the end, it'll dump all of standard error at once. And then hopefully it will be, you know, there won't be anything interesting to see. Yep, no standard error, exit code zero. And I'm happy. So if I go back to this, I can say, uh, I want my same before, but I want a different, Get those. Probably reorder again. I don't know. Looks okay here. Oh no, that's the wrong one. I didn't actually apply it yet. Ha ha ha. That's this line. And now I can move it around again. Okay. Oh yeah, so B4 is relatively new. Um, uh, if, if anyone needs a URL to it, um, if someone can toss a URL into the chat, uh, that'd be awesome. But um, they, so <laughs> some people do acts by hand. Uh, some people, I mean, the level of automation really depends on the maintainer. I, I don't have very large trees, but I have kind of a, a sort of a small collection of different trees. 
Um, but there's a ton of automation that some other maintainers use. Um, mine, um, I like before because it lets me pull the patches really easily. Uh, and before that I had some um, some macros in MUT to sort of say, well, I still have those macros. Like uh, here, if we go back to this, I can say, like I have a macro that'll do a, if I'm reading a thing and I'm like, oh yeah, that looks that looks good. I have a macro that'll say, uh, switch out my editor, trim off the entire body and stuff a reviewed by in, like in with one line. And then I can say stuff like, this looks like a nice addition. I'm not going to say that because I'm instead going to say something like applied after I've actually applied it. Um, B4 will actually do that. Um, let's see, B4. There's a fetch a pull request. Yeah, there's something for, oh, thank you. Yes, generate thanks email when something gets merged or applied. Uh, I might I might play around with that today after applying these two. Um, anyway, where am I? So I've got don't leave the dangling notif on failure, which again, I'm happy with it. It's simple enough. It's just a little helper. Um, I toy with the idea of doing having that renamed to like underscore underscore or set count notify free, which is different from notify detach, which et cetera, et cetera. But I think I'm just gonna leave it as is. It doesn't need to be more complex. Um, yeah, B yeah, B4 is, um, is for, uh, yeah, other people have answered, but um, it's being written by Constantine. Uh, my inc insane verify tree script I've written, and that, that was sort of one of those organic things which started as a shell script. And then once I had too many levels of indentation, I had to go rewrite it in Python, and then I just kept adding to it. Um, similarly, my build wrapper, as it slowly moves things around, and I have to do standard error, you know, out to the end. And I, uh, during Linux Plumbers Conference, there was talk of uh, TuxMake, which is sort of trying to do and like it has a, some of the things in my build script and it has some of the things in my verify tree script in the sense that it is aware it, it sort of has the architecture configurations and stuff um, so that's something I'd like to move to and spend more time on so it's sort of half half and half um, but anyway so I can show let's do a verify tree of this thing I remember it anything of my own uh, my own stuff. Okay, so I am going to be doing, well, I guess I can just say sec comp here and it should probably do the right thing. <laughs> Let's try it. So this creates yet another work tree, checks it out, and then just starts every combination. So this is gonna do 64-bit x86 uh, with sec comp on set. So, kind of like a sort of a def config without set comp enabled just to see if anything breaks. Um, and then this will just grind away for a while. Uh, so I'm gonna go off and do other, other things while we're at it. Um, in the meantime, I'm satisfied with this because the level of, um, level of changes here are very, very small. And we've done a, an all mod config. So I am going to Origin to my own tree for second next. And then uh, if I can get this right. Well oh, nope, I can't. And more scripts that I'm using. This is sort of standard maintainer stuff, although I have two FA tokens set up and it's probably going to say, yeah, where am I? Unknown, unknown. So that did a push so that the latest stuff I've got there 
from Tycho should show up. So now let's go look at, yeah, let's see what's going on with this. Yeah, see there's weird, there's glitches with the sample configs, but we'll come back to that there. I've actually had patches on that one. Um, and you can see warnings that have nothing to do with set comp showing up here on the build. And then now we're gonna do a, a build on x86-64 with just set comp, but without set comp filter. Um, Oh, that one finished okay as well. Um, let's see. And now this one is with sort of full SECOM, with SECOM filter, which is sort of the standard thing, but I need to be able to check these two. Um, so what I'm basically getting is warnings from the RC2 that might show up here. Yet another thing I want to have for these build configs that I can throw into, you know, like Jenkins or something insane um, is... is doing a build without my patches and then adding it and seeing what the differences are on warnings, which I think would be more important for some of the noisier architectures. Um, let's see. Yeah, so 2FA, I don't, I don't think 2FA is mandatory for maintainers, but it really, really is strongly recommended. Um, I, I, I figure I should at least model proper behavior on that one. Um, and yeah, that's that's my build server I'm SSH'd into, 72 cores. It's nothing like Gustavo's machine, though. <laughs> but it's got a lot of RAM. Um, that's good enough. But it means I can do like this matrix of three different sec comp configs and nine arch or like I don't even know how many architectures, 10, 11 architectures, uh, which turns into, you know, like 33 builds. And if it's good at, at five minutes a piece, uh, it's gonna take a little while. But we can continue and look at the, oh, right, I was going to do a thank you for B4. I don't think I've actually done a real thank you with B4 before. I've like looked at it, I tried to set up some, con like, some configuration for it, but I don't think I actually did it before. So let's see. Uh, list pull requests and patch series you have retrieved. It keeps a record of that? Sure. What do you... Okay. Cool. So it remembers what I've retrieved. Um, specific series from dash L. Um, hold on a second. All right, so I will try use the auto thankinator to figure out what got applied and merged. No, no, I don't want that. Instead of current, let's try one automatically for number eight from Tyco. I'm excited to see what happens. able to get, oh I see, it's angry about me not actually being in the second tree. Let's try this. Found three commits. Interesting. Do I have others? Nope. Okay, let's try it. How exciting. Seems like something it should have been able to figure out on its own. <laughs> why these things are not known already. All right, let's look at the thanks file and see what's going on, because that's literally all of the work I wanted it to do. So there's the two, there's the in reply to. Maybe git send email just doesn't know. Best regards. Hmm. 
Let's see what happens if I just... Oh yeah, I just have to hit enter twice. It'll go and pull it out itself. Get send email likes to CC me, even though I think I set a BCC to myself. Like it just seems like noise to add myself to the CC field. Uh, it's entirely unnecessary. In reply to send this email. And uh, yes, sure, send it me. Magic. All right, and then I think nine was the other one. Ooh, cool. It doesn't get confused. Oh, that's funny. It re ooh, it renumbered them. Hmm. How do I feel about that? I don't like that. That's a little confusing. All right. Do I get send email again? I can also edit it, I suppose. Say. Best regards is weird. I don't normally say that, so I'm gonna change that. featured on my Twitch stream. All right, sent. Thanks, B4. Making maintainer work easier. Uh, let's see how that build is coming. It's grinding away. So it's finished with X86-64, it's finished with ARM-64, it is now building on i386, so off it goes, grinding, grinding. Let's see what's next. So the other thing I wanted to look at was this thread. That was a bug fix. I need to get that sent to, um, to Linus. Uh, so I should probably stop for a second and get that sorted out uh, before I move on to what I would consider sort of feature development. Um, so let me take a pause here and actually go back. So what I'm gonna do this is uh, basically duplicate this as a for Linus set comp. Yes, of course, I already have one named that for other things I've sent. Catch garbage. That's on 5.5. That is old. Okay, so get branch. Do I even want to see if it'll do a dash D? Woo! It did, in fact, in fact, realize it had been happily merged. Okay, so new one named for Linus. On zero or Linus second. All right, so these are these are both fixes. Um, I'd like to get them into RC five, uh, so I will. Uh, but I like them ex living in Next um, for a little bit first. So I basically just got this branch split out in case I need to send it, uh, or for rather when I send it. Um, what sets my PS1 prompt. Uh, oh yes, my insane super prompt. Because one line isn't enough, and I got really, as I added more and more stuff to my prompt, I started, um, like my commands started running off the side of the screen, so I ended up doing two uh, in two lines. Um, my shell is bash because I don't like changing that too far away from what's kind of normal and expected. Weird things start happening. Uh, but I think this is like, uh, there's something called, there's an internal bash that's, uh, like, if you look at my PS1, it's it's doing a bunch of extra stuff. So there's a, a git command out of tab, out of uh, the bash completion, I think, which gets your, it tries to figure out what branch you're named in. Um, but you'll notice in my PS1, there's a sig pipe, right? That actually got set by something. So I think what's going or from what I remember, um, that was, uh, there's like a prompt command or something like that. And, uh, no, gosh. I think it's better. Yeah. 
Ah, uh, yes, prompt underscore command is set to prompt func. And then, um, let's see. So I set up a bunch of colors. I mean, I don't even know where all this stuff has come from, but it tries to figure out the ch root. Um, figures out the return value from the last command. Uh, runs something. Ah, uh, here it is. If it was a signal, it gets the signal name out of kill l um, and then sets the date, changes colors and other stuff. Anyway, it's uh, perhaps overly involved. I think get PS1. Yeah, it's some insane function that that came out of bash completion. I'm pretty sure. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I've got my Ford Linus thing. Um, and this, since he's already taken it, I'm gonna have to force this because it's sort of, well, I guess it's not sort of an overwrite, but uh, who cares. And the 2FA is set for to last for a couple of hours, or minutes, hours, hour? It's like 30 minutes or something, I don't remember. Um, so anyway, we push that up, which is easy because it's exactly the, exactly the same as the other one. Um, so we'll go back to the four next so that I can add, again, same branch still, but different names. Okay, I want to check on how is this coming along. So we've finished uh, x86, we've finished ARM, and we have moved on to PowerPC64. And we're going to look at this new uh, other thread. Okay, so this one was basically, hey, if you end up in, in processing a set comp filter and you've returned, as the filter returns something unknown, um, right now set comp defaults to what was the old worst case scenario or worst case action, which was to kill the thread. Um, but due to good points and other shenanigans, uh, it was realized that really we need to be able to kill the entire thread group. Uh, so the entire process, even if there's multiple threads, sort of a way to upgrade that even further because a lot of stuff does not track threads in a way where it might notice the death in a robust way. Um, and so I had a number of people request, hey, can we kill the entire process if things go wrong? There doesn't seem to be a way to do that. So that got added, um, which was a little weird, but it, it got added. And um, Rich correctly points out that probably we should be doing the strongest version of this. Uh, and at the time, I had, well, in my reply, I basically said, yes, let's do it now. I wasn't comfortable doing it when we added kill process just because there was enough of a change. And I added, uh, I cc'd. Uh, Kyle and Robert, because they uh, are involved in, in RR, and basically Kyle said, yeah, this doesn't seem insane. So uh, I want to go ahead and pull that patch as well. It's relatively simple. Oh, I made another comment on I probably want to move. Um, I want to change the logic around a little bit uh, in this area, and I'll show you um, how I handle it. Um, but. In the meantime, it's basically the same as what we did for Tycho's stuff. So let's go grab, oh, what was my B4? Wait, someone was asking that. What are those switches you're using for B4? Yes, I remember. I didn't, uh, did I explain those? I don't know. Let's, yeah. B4. Okay, so this was before oops, B4 AM dash H. So uh, T is for um, uh, this thing calls calls it trailers. Um, apply trailers sent to the cover letter to all patches. So some folks, when reviewing a larger series, um, will reply only to the cover letter and say cool, this all looks good, reviewed by whatever, um, as a way to basically say I have reviewed all of the patches instead of having to send, you know, 10 emails or however many, you know, one email per patch in the thing. Um, so dash T says apply any 
found tags that were sent to the cover letter as applying to all of the patches. Um, and I, I do want that because that seems fine to me. Um, and then there's apply trailers without email address match checking. Uh, I forget exactly what this was, but there was some, I think it's some issue with the sender versus the, um, the tag, like the email from needs to match, match the, the tags email address, which is a pretty reasonable thing to do. Uh, however, sometimes people will, you know, send from, you know, their, their work email or whatever, even though all the, they do their work as a dot at, you know, at kernel.org address, so that it ends up with this mismatch. Um, and usually I'm dealing with small enough series that I've, you know, I'm already, it's already obvious to me no one is spoofing someone's email address or whatever from the thread. Um, so for me, it's easier to include that right now. I think for larger uh, maintainers of larger patch or larger uh, trees or patch series, I really don't want to add that. And then uh, add the link or add my signed off by, um, which is, that's fine. That's how I would like to do it. And then add the link um, so that a patch in the tree that gets committed, you can find the discussion about where it came from. Anyway, so I'm gonna do the same thing, but this time for Rich's patch. Whee! And then I will, I think there's actually a command to actually run git am, or maybe not anymore. That might've been in the other version of this tool. Yeah, I don't see, just do it already. So, that and now I want to go in here and possibly muck around a bit because if you see if you see what's here is basically we're swapping the order we're saying if we know if the action is known like if they've called out kill thread then we just do the killing thread bit and otherwise anything else should just do a full group exit and you'll see the logic on that. Um, logic is here after getting the what what type of what type of return value. This is after the filter returns. Here's the here's the filter coming back, and here's the action that was requested. So if this kernel is running and it sees a action it does not recognize, uh, failing closed as the safe way to go. Um, and so we issue the log line and then there's logic here about dumping core, which I'll get into in a second. But the main patch changes these two, which is to say, um, if you wanna kill the thread only, do this one thing, which is just do exit on the thread. And if you're anything else, we wanna kill the whole group, um, which I think will be okay. But again, this is a feature change, not a bug fix. So I definitely wanted to sit next for a little while. And then I can show the, the self-tests and some other things here in a second. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, I wanted to fix the core dumping logic. So you can't really dump core on us. If you're killing one thread of a larger process, uh, you can't call do core dump because do core dump makes the assumption that the entire process group has died and will in fact enforce that assumption. So if you try to dump core on a single thread, it will take out the entire process, uh, which was not great. So we wanna make sure we're doing this right, which was effectively, if there's only one thread and we're killing the thread, fine, or if we're killing the entire process, okay. Uh, so I think what I wanna do is change the logic around here. So if we're killing the entire process, which is not really because now we're in the default. So if we're saying if we're not killing um, the thread, in other words, we've got a default or we're asking to kill the process um, or we only have one thread, then we do it, uh, which is what I want since we're sort of reversing the logic here. I wonder if 
if yeah no this is fine keep split okay and this is basically the how to get a proper core dump and then we shut down the whole thing um, so I have a bunch of these single word things it's just me doing git diff as D and L is git log of one line anyway so that's the difference and I have you can do git commit dash dash fix up blah blah and then do a rebase and some other things but again because scripting I actually just have one called git smash and I can either give it a SHA to smash the diff into or if I leave it off it'll smash it into head and that's the current patch we're on so I just say smash and now there's no diff and if I look at the patch as seen it reorders it and adds that thing so I'll make a note that I changed this slightly um, Factored, we changed um, the core dump selection logic to match, mm -hmm. which I talked about in that thread, so I think this is fine. Um, and this tends to be the way to add notes. Uh, like, it's not a big change, it's effectively a couple characters. Uh, so I put it as a note in here. If I've done a major bit of rework on someone's patch, Usually I'll switch around and do um, uh, a code developed by tag so that it sort of says, you know, all the good things are the original authors and all the bugs were added by me. It's sort of how have you code developed by, whereas this one is, is for really small changes or typos or grammar fixes and small stuff like that. Um, yeah, smash is a macro I define. So if you have stuff in your path named something git dash something um i have some old stuff that's in here but um i have you can see my handy alias for git grep when i misspell it git groupy <clears throat> um but if you look at git smash i do completely horrible things so first what are we gonna smash this into um and the, the into is actually the SHA before the current one, because after you change it, it will have a new SHA. And then I make a temp file, I clean up after it, and I stuff this crazy, uh, I build a script on the fly. Uh, I have the commit and the SHA and a rewrite file. I take the head of what you get when you do a git, git rebase and I replace the SHA I'm targeting, right, which is one above, uh, and then I say that that needs to be a fix up for the one below it, and then I set my editor to that script and do a git rebase interactive, which it isn't anymore, uh, and smash it, and it's just completely horrible, and I think that there is probably a much, much safer way to do this with a uh, commit a git commit dash dash fix up and some other things. Um, I just, I think I had this script done before uh, dash dash fix up either existed or I knew about it, probably the latter. Um, anyway, that that's one that I use kind of constantly because I'm always like fixing some typo and I don't want to go through all the rebase and everything else. Um, Annotations prefix of the email address. Yeah, I, I don't think we have a particularly um, uh, We don't have a well-defined way to do those annotations. I don't think Hold on I'm reading text messages There's a lot of wind here so people keep losing power so far. I'm lucky Okay um, yeah, so I've just used my name. I, I, I don't know. It's I, usually I'm, I'm trying to cram so much into one. Um, I'm usually trying to cram so much into one line. I mean, this one is not so bad, but sometimes I'm trying to explain myself in a long line. So having this part be short um, is how I've done it. Um, 
like Andrew Morton is just AKPM. Um, that's short for him. That's sort of where I learned that pattern, I guess. Anyway, um, so I'm happy with this patch, uh, but I want to go look at the self-tests because I don't remember if I'm actually testing... Um, I don't remember if I'm testing for, for kill. Explicitly. Unknown. Yeah, so here is basically return some some unknown uh, filter thing, and it is expecting a SIGSYS, which it would get. Uh, that's what it would set up for, but this isn't, um, how do I put that? Uh, this is single-threaded. So this isn't testing the behavior from a multi-threaded application. So I think the self-test wouldn't even notice this change, which is kind of not great. We should probably have a self-test for this. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, first of all, okay, where are we on? All right, so, oops, apparently I failed to get my RISC-V uh, compiler set up. Made our way through PowerPC, though. Do, 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 do. Hmm. That's interesting. What don't I have it set into? default config. Sorry. Right. Well, oops. Anyway, uh, I'll come back to that. Let's look at self-tests first. Do, 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 um, uh, I'm trying to think about my KPM setup. Where am I at? Oh, this is the LTO config. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. All right, we'll use that config then. So let me copy from LTO. Do you have a config? Yes, I do. To here. This isn't, this isn't quite perfect because it's Clang versus GCC, and I'm just going to do, uh, do a quick build on against GCC, but at least it has the configs I'm happy with for testing. Um, so let's see, the skips on here I think are probably from not having uh, Checkpoint Restore in the kernel I built. So I should add those back. Yeah, so it's yelling about it. Why not? All right, let's try again. These aren't an all mod config, so these are much, much faster to build. I've tried to have, I don't know, a relatively minimal kernel for these sort of uh, behavioral runtime tests. Things get more complex when I start working on 
architecture specific changes, but since we're still in the core, the core set comp code, I'm, I'm happy with this. And we can see more RC2 warnings. Ooh, I just had a power blip. This will be exciting. I don't think I configured disconnect protection from an OBS. Okay, uh, that is done building. some reason this stopped line wrapping correctly so I ended up doing a log file so I could get stuff line unline wrapped but I think it's just my terminal was misbehaving anyway this is under QMU um, and it's uh, an Ubuntu focal image just to keep my life simple so this is the old seccomp BPF Test. Well, who knows what I've got here, but I can build it again and copy it over. But everything's passing there because we don't actually test. I don't actually test a single thread dying, um, which is going to take me a while to actually uh, write a self-test for right now. But I am going to add that to my to-do list here. Thread kill versus process kill. But let's see if I have anything process kill. Oh, here it is, kill thread or group. Kill itself or both of us, right? So I do have a test for killing the thread or killing the group. Um, I've got kill thread, kill process. Well, this was added, but what I didn't add in this was one that will notice the default flipping back and forth. And this is a, we reused this a couple different times. So in this one, when we say kill thread, we say, hey, I'm gonna fork out the child, um, kill thread a group, and then we say basically wait for our child uh, to to die, and then this one is uh, kill everything, and we should uh, we should see a success. As we're looking at the the exit code here, I think the exit code comes out of this thing. Forty two. Yep. And if we get here, only the spawn thread died. Let the parent know the whole process didn't die. So what I need to do is all of these again, but I want to be able to specify here instead of kill thread and kill process, uh, we want to have an unknown. So uh, this right now is whether or not we do thread process or unknown. So it looks like I might actually be able to fix this one up pretty quickly. Um, hmm. Right. Do I have anything named kill unknown? No, I don't. Okay. So for me, I'm going to just flip this around from a bool to something else. Um, I could make it an enum, I suppose. How is uh, kill thread, kill process, unknown, I'll just call this kill how. So it's got another set here. So these are the filters, basically the two, two uh, 
types of filters it's going to do. And I actually note that I think they're completely identical except for the return code here. Uh, so I'm probably just going to refactor this to make that a little bit easier. Um, so uh, can I do this without being annoying? Kill house equal to kill Fred, yes, then second return kill Fred. Otherwise, kill house equal to kill process. Kill process. Otherwise, we want some ridiculous thing, so. And then we don't have to call this thread in anything. We can just call this uh, filter again. It's going to be called program again. This is filter. And uh, this is not filter thread anymore. This is just the program. Thread rule going to make sure that the kill process flag cannot be downgraded by a new filter. Oh, right. Whoops. Glad, glad I did comments. Um, yeah, it does look like a good case for a switch, but those are static initializers, so I didn't want to deal with that. <laughs> um, but it looks like I don't, I don't get the win here because I want to. I still want to have uh, a thread rule again to make sure kill process cannot be downgraded by a new filter. Man, I can't remember exactly what that means. I don't know. That means we're going to keep prog thread. So, hold up. Prog thread, prog. Okay, let's do. Let's do it here. This is kill house equal to kill thread. And we'll do thread versus the other one. How's my line too long? A bit. Yay, indentation. Okay. All right, still got prog thread. Now I can set up the other one to do basically kill unknown. This will be kill process, and then I make sure I haven't broken anything. 
Oh yes, that would be handy. Cheap because of my local local enum. Okay, so did my refactoring break anything? And in theory, it shouldn't. No, my refactoring didn't kill anything. And the old logic for an unknown kill would be to kill the thread. So if I were to duplicate the kill thread, um, if I were to kill, duplicate this test, and say, um, I would want I believe these are the only two things that get changed. Oh, well, I just copied it already. Duh. Anyway, this should, the old behavior would be to kill only the thread. So if I make this and, or I type out everything forever, mm -hmm. what did I do? Oh, I copied too many is what I copied. Uh -huh. Okay, so now this test should fail on the new kernel since we just changed the behavior of how that works. And it did not. Great. So what are we doing wrong? Um, my um, perhaps the check of adding this kill thread should kill process for that can it be downgraded by a new filter ah okay so I understand this now finally so this was to make sure Sorry, this additional filter here. So my, um, this unknown value here is, while technically unknown, it is smaller than the value of kill thread. Um, so this filter got added again to kill the thread. So because it didn't find, that's gonna be the better match on the filter. If I remove this, I think it'll fail as I'm expecting. But the reason for this was to make sure that the kill process was stronger than uh, kill thread. So if I add thread, I should still see the process die. So in this case, I only want to do this when we've done, uh, only if we've done an actual uh, second kill process. Let's say if is equal to kill process, or sorry, is not equal to kill thread. No, because we only want to test it for kill process. Do 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 do. Still nothing. <laughs> Apparently I don't know how my own code works. Thread. Oh yes, thread group. <laughs> I, that might have gotten bike shed at the time, I don't remember.
is why I thought reviews would be more interesting than coding. Because coding is mostly me staring at at the code, going, "Why isn't it working?" Uh, always going to do a kill process, and if we've done kill process, then I want to add the extra one. I wonder if my return value is just no good. Side and is over. Well, this that comment's not true anymore, but that's okay. It didn't break anything. Let's do this value. Oh, ha! Because <laughs> I didn't actually change the argument here. Was literally testing kill thread. That might explain it. All right, let's leave this. But what did I call it? I'll just I guess. I don't remember anything. Kill thread, process, kill unknown. Right. It's not really a kill unknown, it's sort of unknown return value. Okay. Make and I can type. Please fail now. Yes. Yay! It has correctly failed. So, the new behavior in the kernel is that I want the unknown value to act like it was the entire process killed. So, let me say, now duplicate the test logic for kill process. And we can do things like, uh, so both of these assert that, uh, no, one is signaling. We can weaken this and say, expect that this is signaled. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if it isn't, we're going to include some hints as to what is going on. I'm going to assert the other one down here. Um, I forgot the format. It's just regular? No carriage return. Okay. Um, I don't even know what to say. Are you testing? Um, So we've adjusted it to actually have the behavior we're expecting, and hopefully this will pass. Yay, it passes. Uh, and if I run this, for example, on uh, the, you know, some regular one, some other stuff freaks out, of course, because I don't have a 
bunch of configs. But the one I really want to find is kill unknown. So we say, oh, we expect it to be signaled as second return uh, is only killing the thread. Yeah, unknown second return. Killed by assertion. Fail. Test unknown. So that is a test for a behavioral change in SecComp. And we want to include this. So what does this look like? Um, this looks pretty good. Um, I am wondering... So one, one piece of the test harness here... Um, is if you notice these three are basically exactly the same except for this argument and what we expect out of the status returns and in fact at this point kill process and kill unknown are basically the same except I added this th log for fun um, and this kind of cut and pasting really bothers me uh, but there is Variant fixtures that we can use as well. But I'm trying to figure out if it is more pain to add a fixture and the associated logic than to just leave this cut and pasted right now. And I think my my sense of it is that because it's a single, like it's just three tests, I'm not super excited about turning it into a variant fixture. And I probably could, but I. I think it's just more mess than it's worth. All right, so I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm happy with that. Um, <laughs> more horrendous scripts. So when I do a commit, there's a there's a prepare commit hook in Git, uh, and I have some scripts that'll go look at the files that have been changed in this commit, and then look back through the Git history, attempting to find what the prefixes are for prior commits to those files in an attempt to figure out what the pattern is there, because I am frequently working across the entire tree, not just in SecComp or, or other, other areas. Um, so this is a way I can sort of figure out what, uh, what the most common things are. So in this case, touching that file, uh, in order of preference, the top one being the most common, uh, is self-test SecComp. Um, and in this case, that is what I tend to use, so I get rid of the others. I can show that in a second. Uh, add test for unknown second turn kill behavior. This is my hint at who should CC based on commit history. Um, but in this case, since the uh, git send email will do most of this for me already, and I'm sort of reviewing this as, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of my tools are for tree-wide stuff, so this doesn't really apply. In this case, Andy and Will and Schwa will be CC'd anyway uh, when git send email starts operating. Um, so I'm just gonna pull all this away and cc explicitly uh, rich. Actually, 
should probably um, Rich Robert. I thought. Oh, and there's Kyle. Sorry. All these folks. So let's see what we got. Factoring, got stuff in the middle. No extra pieces, no extra hunks. And I've already done my testing locally. first. Which one do I want to do? Did I refactor current splat? Yet more. Yet more tools. Okay. So this is, obviously I don't need to CC myself. This is, I mean, I'm the maintainer, so I'm always trying to figure out who in the world I'm actually sending stuff to when it's for my own tree. But since it's based on the work, uh, it's sort of instigated by the work which had done, I'm going to include I'm going to put him on two, keep those. I don't need this to net dev. Um, I'm going to CC uh, Linux case self-test um, and then add a note. Um, this is going via the seccomp tree. Um, that way, you know, Schwa, who is the maintainer of the seccomp tree, will not be wondering, um, and I'll take her off ex an explicit CC so it's not directed at her. Um, usually that's sufficient. And then these are all BPF folks. Um, I'll reorder by people who are sort of involved in this. Put them first. And then these are the other reviewers for the second tree, so I'll leave them. And then Christian said he wanted to be a reviewer too. So maybe I should just start sending him stuff. <laughs> Let's see. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, okay. I take that as a yes. Actually, like, I, I think there are other str Twitch streams where you do all these crazy things and have beer emotes and other stuff. I haven't looked at that. I just wanted to get something actually running. I don't want to go too crazy with it. Okay. So that's that. And I can, um, I can basically, I can remove the hints here because I'm the maintainer. I don't know. There's... I go back and forth about where CCs really need to end up. Anyway, I'm happy with this. Uh, off it goes, and hopefully my scripts actually work. Doot, 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 at which point I get an um, email sent. Oh, it is. It's kind of splat. It's still doing. Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. I had two scripts. One is called Current Splat, which is really, really, really straightforward. Um, and I forgot I'd actually, uh, it was, it's for setting a single patch, but I was trying to merge my workflows around before. And um, I forgot I refactored my, uh, I have current email as a script, uh, which is basically what I use for sending an entire series of email. And I had refactored it recently to send a single patch correctly. 
uh, and I did not use it here, so oops. But what I wanted to do was uh, do attestations on this one. But I don't have an outgoing, I don't have a cover letter. Uh, did it retain? Yes, it retained the patch, so I can still do uh, attestations. Again, as you watching me in the middle of my mess. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this right and do the right thing. The real problem is with my PGP key agent is unhappy. So I always have to prime it. Anyway, let me try something. that have been sent. And I can specify what I want. Crappy scripts. Okay. list. Which not a lot of people are doing yet. And there's like absolutely no information about how it looks. I thought there was like a P sign or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm waiting for it to show up on here. I'll have this to chat. should be paying attention more. Um, dash n dash o start up patch. Oh, you do the git send email specifically? Yeah. Again, this is all like me continuing to mutate workflows um, that I already had in place to adapt to before and adding signatures and some other stuff. Because I had I'd been doing it manually before. Oh my, uh, let's see, my attest was, yeah, that test was, yeah, well, you're doing dash n, so, you know, don't actually do it. But in theory, I guess that patch attestation is, is mine? Where's the raw dump? That should show, right, where it came from? I don't even know. I am, I used to have a way to, I thought it would include it in the subject lines, but I guess some of that's being removed. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the, the lore dump of signatures and I see that there are some spam. There's some wonderful spam. Disposable glove making machine. All right. Um, but let's go look at lore itself. And there is... Ah, that is not the letter I wanted. There's the lower email for the thing I just sent, and I'm happy with it. So, So that's pushed as well. I should once if I get reviews and stuff, I may uh, update my tree. I I try to have a stable tree for Linux next, but it doesn't always happen. Um. Okay. 
back to my to-do list. So I'm going to die of hunger in about 20 minutes, so I'm probably going to wrap this up at in 20 minutes. I won't bore you with time zones. We've done those three, and I think there's one more I'd like to do out of here, which is... So this was one other thread that I had listed, which was basically, hey, can we rework uh, sort of the open-coded uh, architecture, the registers fetching? Instead of doing task PT reg of current, use the macro current PT reg. And I went and looked, I mean, it's perfectly fine from what I can see, but it was like, what is the benefit of this refactoring is what I said. Um, and uh, Dennis got back to me. Um, explaining that there are optimized versions and there's some other reasons. So what I wanted to do is sort of update his commit message with his, his more details. Um, so uh, that's, that's I, I want to take this patch. It's not an, uh, in theory, it has no behavioral differences. Ha ha ha. But this one is a per architecture behavioral difference one, but I am pretty... I'm pretty confident that those two macros, if you go look at them closely, they're basically the same. Uh, so I want to take this, but I want to update his commit message a little bit. Uh, so once again, we'll go back and... Um, what was my V4 for this? Oh, wait. Kill process by default. I didn't send a thank you for it. Hold on. How did that work again? Thank you, dash L. Kill process instead of thread for unknown actions. Uh, thank you. Was it dash T? Is it dash T? Dash, dash S. Dash S8. Mm, all right, yes, of course. Edit from here. Okay. Doo -doo -doo. I'll just add some notes. I creaked the cordon logic. not line wrapping in emails. Um, testing tests. Uh, yikes. Don't wrap my signature. you sent. B4, B4. I gotta figure out what B4 uses for signatures, because the best regards is perfectly fine, but just isn't really how I would end emails. Feels weird. Um, where is it getting a signature from, I wonder? I'm not going to go look at B4 right now. PT Reg. Okay. Uh, am I not in the right shell? That doesn't seem to remember my. T S 
SL and the message ID is this one. this that's <clears throat> my s is git show so that's just replacing task pt regs with current pt regs everywhere like i said um, but let's take a quick look and make sure for example we didn't forget any like that one hmm. task is equal to current <clears throat> so that's why he didn't notice it, I think. Task, 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 task. Let's see. Why is task even here? Just as a way to be short? I think this was probably there during a refactoring of some sort. I think there was an argument coming in to populate SecComp data a long time ago. Um, so I think I'm going to use this opportunity to just fix it all. All right, what is this actually called now? Uh, no, no, no. Yes, PT Reg. Current PT Reg. with our regs and ktask EIP. Yep, yeah, okay. This should all be sane. But that's why I like checking when we do replacements because maybe there's something missed. All right, so what got missed was this. Um, the question is, do I want to include it in his patch? I think I will, just because it's sort of one behavioral difference, so... Another use for git smash, and then I can amend this and say, uh, also refactored one additional uh, case uh, using, mm, let's call it, uh, This subject to be a little bit more descriptive. Let's see. Right, so what I wanted to do <clears throat> was his. Um, I had originally found his initial commit message to be very short, and I didn't understand what the purpose was, so I wanted to get. Um, more description. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is take this as uh, described in this commit. Let's go look at that real quick. I'd rather use a git short there. New helper from 2012. <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, this SHA is... Um, I also have another one called, hold on, let me get into the tree, get short commit. And that is, again, 
yet another super short one where I just print out HSI for these short commits. Um, and that is as described in commit blah, which is easier, is more readable in a commit log than a URL. These versions, okay. Um, let's see. Perhaps in, in preparation for a talk smell rule for using the Interfaces use the reference protected internally for access checks. Um, all right, so in preparation for, I'm going to specify this as well. Uh, no, I won't do that because that changes. I will use this one here. That's a good point. Um, I'm doing a repeated per CPU dereference. Uh, that's a good point. I wonder. I suppose it's okay to do it twice there. Let me go look at it again. So maybe I could just change the one and leave it alone and leave the rest. Live review of patches. This doesn't have to do go through email and back. Um, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks a lot cleaner. Sure, let's do it. Thank you. Let's see, do user notification. Instead of raw accesses to current cred. Okay, I think that's a little bit more readable. And if I come back to this in six months after I've completely forgotten everything about this, um, this should be enough for me to sort of remember what was I, what were we doing? What had he tried to tell me in that thread without me having to go piece it back together from the thread? Although it's here if I do. Um, so hopefully that'll look good. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and actually, I'm thinking about this. The speed actually is an issue here because this is populate setcom data. So we really do want to go after this. And now I'm starting to wonder if, if I've already done the current dereference, do I want to lay, leave task PT regs alone? I'm just going to end up backing out all my local changes to this.
chicken. Let's put it back. this comment will make sense to me or other people. Actually, I put it above the block. Since we're already doing the work. Okay, once again, undoing the thing I looked at. <laughs> Did you mit maybe you missed Git Smash earlier. <laughs> uh, here I can do it. Well, I won't go over it again, but it's basically using, um, doing the same thing as a commit dash dash fix up and then doing the, the fix up smash, uh, but I do it with some horrible script instead. Okay, so I've gone full circle on this patch. It looks lovely just as it was sent. <laughs> I've added one comment for myself in the future and expanded uh, the, the description uh, so that I know what in the world's going on. Um, and of course, it would be nice to smoke test this one because it really shouldn't break the world. Uh, let's see. This is, um, this is an amusing change of my own patterns to be talking out loud for all of this. Like, I do mutter to myself while while working, but now actually people will need to be able to hear what I'm saying. Uh, okay, got that built. Let's start this up again. We're up. Did we break the world? Well, if we broke the world, frankly, it wouldn't boot. Because, um, like, uh, system D depends on seccomp so much, and if I made that egregious an error as far as being able to, to get to registers, the whole, everything would destroy itself. But self-test still passed, system still boots. Um, I like it. So where are we? I've got PT reg instead. Um, get push version for an app seccomp. Do, do, do. Off we go. And then, this is so four. Uh, this is so fun. The, the B4's thank yous. Still eight, right? Yes. Dash, uh, dash T? No, dash S. I keep thinking it's T for some reason. Eight. Ah, can I keep doing that? Signature. Let's see, I add 
a comment for a weird case. Uh, task equal occurrence. Hopefully that looks correct. Do, do, do. Uh, no, actually, get look at my set comp tree for that, that commit. Hey, look at that, it's 20 minutes later. I have been talking for two hours and I am hungry. I need to go get lunch. Let's see. Do you appreciate if someone replies, thank you for accepting the patch? Um, it's nice. I certainly, um, I, I don't think poorly of anyone who doesn't. Uh, it's, it's cool to sort of close that loop. Um, it's it's uncommon, but I know Gustavo is real good about that. For example, I know that came up recently on Twitter. Um, it's it's good. I think I personally have this um, some sort of built-in glitch in my own mind from long ago using Request Tracker for issue tracking. In that, as the person closing issues, you would like say, "Okay, cool. Your your problem is fixed." Uh, enjoy, and you'd you know you'd send it and close the bug, and go on with your day. And then very nice, well-meaning people would say, "Great, thank you for your work," and that would reopen the issue. Now I have to go and close it again. So it was really, really. Uh, I have this like glitch of going, "Oh no, am I going to cause like what automation system do they have in place that's going to suddenly start tracking? Um, <laughs> it's going to reopen because I thanked them." But I think that it was. A glitch of request tracker and I don't think patchwork cares because it's actually tracking a thread and everything else um, anyway <laughs> but uh, I usually if there's been an ongoing discussion or it's been you know a lot of people usually I like to clarify anything as the patch sender I like to clarify anything and it's certainly nice to know again as the maintainer if someone is I don't know paying attention or whatever but it's it's probably it's probably good courtesy to do so. It's just um, uh, it it kind of depends. I mean, it's it's a little strange. Like, do I write a you know are we gonna have a B four plugin that sends a thank you for thank yous or like it's it's silly. I think what it really boils down to is if it's if it's easy, if it feels like it's the right thing to do. Like if there was a lot of discussion and like back and forth, and finally the work happened or. You know, like in this case, I've, I kind of rewrote a commit log or added a test or whatever, then sort of having the, the patch sender go, oh, okay, I see the other stuff that happened here. Cool, that looks good to me, right? And that for me as a maintainer is useful because I actually get to close the loop on this one, especially this last patch I just sent because, you know, I think the comment makes sense, but I know Dennis is looking much more closely at current PT reg than, than I am. Uh, so maybe that comment doesn't make sense or isn't quite accurate. So having him come back and say, cool, great, thanks. Or, oh, actually you should probably, what you probably want to say is this or that or whatever. Um, anyway, uh, thank you all for listening to me ramble on for quite some time. Um, and uh, I think this was fun because it forced me to f stay focused on one task for two hours, uh, which is good. So maybe I'll do this again. So cool. Thanks very much. I'm just seeing if I missed anything in chat here. Yeah. 
yeah, I've, I have replied to David saying thank you. Usually it's because I was patch bombing, it, bombing him with a hundred patches. <laughs> that was another good time to thank the maintainer for thank you for taking all my insane patches. Cool. All right, well, take care. Um, enjoy. I'll see if I can do this again maybe next week or something. Uh, I'll, I'll put it in the Twitch schedule and yell about it on Twitter. Anyway, see everybody later. Bye-bye.